What is up YouTube? What? 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 What is up YouTube? Rory Gissing here. I'm now 10 weeks away from my pro debut in the IFBB Pro League for Men's Physique, which is going to be the Arnold Classic UK. I've been pretty much on prep for the last six weeks and I just thought I'd catch everyone up on what has been happening in, well, since prep began and what the plans are going forward. And we're pretty much full steam ahead right now. I didn't really think it would be necessary to do a weekly video for prep updates because prep's very monotonous. Monot oh, I tried to say this word on my Instagram the other day. Monotonous, monotonous, monotonous. I was right. It is monotonous. Well, oh, fuck, I did it again. Monotonous, monotonous, monotonous. No, monotonous, monotonous. Prep is very monotonous. Fuck. <laughs> monotonous. Prep is very monotonous. <laughs> so prep is pretty monotonous and pretty much all you do is you either decrease your carbs slowly if your fat isn't, if your fat levels aren't going down or you increase your cardio again just to bring the fat levels down. I try not to say weight because I find this even with myself and it's quite hard to get, uh, yeah, it's quite hard to get your head around that. You don't norm, you don't always lose weight, but you can be losing fat. So uh, this, I found this for myself, this prep, we've actually been able to sort of fluctuate in weight. So we've gone down some weeks, up some weeks, down some weeks, and overall, I am still getting leaner and leaner and leaner every single week. So it's a pretty good sign that I'm only losing body fat rather than muscle at the same time because I said I'm getting leaner and I'm kind of staying the same weight. It's a pretty good indication that some muscle growth has still occurred, which a lot of people, there's a pretty significant argument to say is impossible, but I found there's a way. There is definitely a way. Uh, I think Neil Hill has discovered that, uh, or maybe not been doing the first to discover it, but He's implemented that into my plan and it has been working fantastically. So where was I? So I was saying, um, e yes, so my weights. So I started this prep at pretty much 221 pounds. So 221 pounds and it dropped down very quickly back to 218 in week one and sort of slowly went down and up all the way through. So last week I was at the 10, so I say last week, my last check-in being the 10 week mark check-in, I was, what was I? I'll have to look that up now. I was 212.4 pounds. So there's a pretty big drop. So eight and a half pounds has been lost since the start of prep. And two of those weeks I've had increases in weight instead of decreases in weight. So we are going full steam ahead. And what's happened last week, I actually had a family event I attended, which I'm very used to missing all family events. And this year, well, kind of 2020 kind of just reevaluated everything. And I don't think they should be missed anymore, really. It's some things, some things are just not worth missing, you know? And especially if you've ever lost a member of family that kind of rattles you a little bit and you kind of realize your priorities and think, there's being pretty much 10, 10 and a half weeks out, having a couple meals off just to go see the family, isn't exactly going to change much come show day. I wouldn't have had the attitude going before. I don't know why, I just, I would always bring my food and I would sit and eat out of a tub in a restaurant. It's just the way I've always done it. Many other people do that. If I was maybe three weeks out, then I would still do that. But being 10 weeks out, I didn't see the damage so what we're doing this week is we've brought the carbs right the way down to pretty much counter any negative uh, side effects I'm gonna have from having pretty much two cheat meals in a day. And things are going pretty well. So the cheat meal, of course, is like a refeed. So I woke up pretty much lighter than what I did the day before because it fires your metabolism up and the carbs have gone way down. So what are we talking? It was 120 grams of carbs we've taken away from the diet uh, compared to what I was on the week prior. So that week, that, that 11 week out mark was, I was at 
well, I'm gonna, it was pretty much roughly uh, 300 grams of carbs and then coming in, having the double cheat meal, then we've done, we're gonna now do a week of pretty much 180 grams of carbs and that is, well, that's your 120 deficit. I say deficit, that's your drop by 120 grams, which is going to make crazy differences is it necessary because I had two cheat meals? No, but am I on prep? Yes. Am I trying to be as lean as possible? Yes. So we're, that's the plan. That's just all we're doing. So that's what it is. We're going to be getting reassessed come midweek. And if I am losing too much weight, we're going to have to throw in an extra refeed, bump the carbs up again and reset and go on. So this is what I mean. This is the full chasing of increase the cardio or decrease the carbs. Cardio, I'm pretty happy to stick into minimal cardio who isn't, so we are dropping the carbs, and that's absolutely fine. Yes, the hunger is kicked in. Yes, I'm getting more tired during the day. That is the eventuality of prep. You are gonna feel a bit more lethargic. You're gonna feel drained. If you don't, you're not, I don't, something is potentially wrong because, or you're just lying. Like, I don't, you can't not have a prep, like, especially at a pro level, and just be absolutely fine day to day all the way through to the show, you're going to feel the effects of having low body fat, which I don't have right now, but it's going to kick in eventually. I am tired now simply because my food's been taken down, you know, that's, that's it, it was quite a big cut straight from the get go from 300 to 180. That's, yeah, I mean, I, I felt it, you know, it's not even that high to start with. I'm I don't need crazy amounts of foods we discovered in the off season. It's, it was sufficient. Um, it was pretty sufficient. I don't think we ever went past 400 grams of carbs. I don't think. Maybe, maybe not. No, I don't think so. I don't think we did. So yeah, it's not, I, not everyone has to really push, push and push and push the food, push the carbs uh, to grow and then Cut them out entirely, I also disagree with coming into a prep. I don't think keto is the best answer. I do think carbs in the system will provide uh, not only just energy to fuel a better workout, but it just keeps your metabolism slightly boosted as well. This is just my opinion. That is completely bro science, if you wish. Um, Yeah, I completely just zoned out then. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I am recording here and it's pretty much nearly midnight. I will be having my last meal and going to bed pretty soon. I just haven't got a video out in too long, pretty much. Uh, just because I'm just too tired sort of thing. You know, I'll work during the day, I'll get my own workouts in and I'm just fried. And doing a YouTube video is the last thing I want to do when you need a certain amount of energy, you know, kind of thing. And I am probably the world's worst fitness vlogger. As you can probably see, I don't know if I'll edit in the mistakes, but I probably will just because it's a bit more funny, it's a bit more reality. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm the world's worst fitness vlogger. This, welcome to my channel, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about training splits, training plans. Does anything change going through doing a well, a show essentially, or a photo shoot, anything. When you're cutting, does anything change from your off-season training to on-season training? No, um, nothing changes really. You do. I did get a different plan simply because because I didn't have uh, a fully kitted out gym to use, so I kind of had to do. I had to makeshift, you know, makeshift workout plans, just try and get the best off-season I could with what I had. Pretty much like everyone else, you know, if you had access to a gym, then fair play, you know. I didn't, unfortunately, so well, I just did the best I could. So my training splits, uh, at the moment I'm currently focusing on my chest and even though it looks like I'm trying to show it off because I'm sitting here in a beta, I'm not, I just got home from the gym, I haven't showered, haven't done nothing, I don't even have a pump on right now because I didn't even train chest. So there you go, whatever, uh, it is what it is. I'm frozen in time. I can't remember what I was gonna say. Um, my split, so my training split. Okay, so we do, so because it's chest focused, we're doing chest twice a week. So we have chest and abs twice a week. So we'll do chest one, back and calves. We then go into a shoulder day. We then have a day off and then back into chest and abs and then a full leg day. So quads, hams, glutes, and then back into, 
What was the last thing I did? Arm day. So yeah, so I got to do an arm day, which is kind of exciting because I haven't had an arm day in maybe three or four years. Just wasn't a part of the plan. And is it beneficial? Yes, it's good to have an arm day. Arms aren't my target of growth. It just so happens the way... Are we back? Yes, we're back. Okay, so technology issues. You gotta love them from the world's worst fitness blogger. And okay, so we're talking about arm day. So I haven't had an arm day in uh, a few years and that's just because I'd always just throw it on the end of a workout, mainly because arms weren't my focus. I would have chest focus, triceps secondary, back focus, biceps secondary. And it just kind of happened in the way where it didn't really fit anywhere in the split. And so we just had buys and tries on a day as its own. So it wasn't purposely there for an arm day to, to have my arms as a weakness to work on. It's just the way the split works. We didn't have anywhere else to put them. So they just went on the end and it's actually really good fun. So I get to do an arm day, get massive uh, pumped up arms for a couple hours and feel good about myself and then go home and not go to the beach and not show them off. But yeah, so arm day, good fun. That's where I'm at. That is the pretty much the prep update. So we're going pretty well. We dropped the hammer. We are coming in pretty well. The abs are out. The, uh, the tightness is coming in. The skin is getting tighter every week. I get more definition. I get more striations. In this lighting, you're not gonna see anything, but I am quite vascular at the moment. I am getting more striations and we're still 10 weeks away. So, so far, so good. We are on track, if anything, maybe a little bit in front of the timeline, but that's a good thing because we might be able to jump into a show beforehand. Let's see. I have no idea how to end this video, so I'm just gonna just say I'm just too tired and too hungry and prep is not kicking my ass because this is how it's exactly supposed to be, but it's just the way it should be. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, that's pretty much it. I actually said exactly what I should have said. Uh, yeah, so this is Prep. Welcome to the world's worst fitness bloggers channel. My name is Rory Gitting. I will see you at the next Road to the Arnold's update.